Hi, this is Jennifer. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm back with another episode of Stencil Club Inspiration. These are projects that are inspired by Stencil Girl Stencil Club. Today I have an art journal page with a geometric background that is using the August 2019 Stencil Club release. I'm working in my Dina Wakely Media Square Journal and this particular journal, and if you have one, you'll know what I'm talking about. The paper is quite thick and it really absorbs a lot of paint and moisture. So as I'm laying down my half and half mix of Dina Wakely acrylic olive and plain just cheap white acrylic paint, I'm not able to get um, the sort of variation in tone with my brush that I was hoping. It's really sucking that paint in. So you'll see I went back with a spray bottle and sprayed some water and then dabbed a little bit up with a baby wipe just to get the variation in tone that I was looking for. Now I'm just giving this a quick dry before I move on. The August 2019 Stencil Club release, um, ha it was very unique. The 9 by 12 which we are used to as a standard um, size for our Stencil Girl stencils, uh, has a lot of different pattern and design on it. And the intention is that you would cut the individual designs out, which give you quite a few um, individual stencils and cutting them apart makes them a lot easier to use. However, this stencil you see here is the six by six, I believe, that's included in the club set. And off camera, I'm mixing a, a half and half um, mixture of Dina Wakely Media Acrylic Cheddar and Deco Art Quinoc Radon Gold Hue. I'm building my um, depth of color as we go. So I started with the very light olive sort of green, yellow green, and now I'm working this medium tone uh, through the stencil. The great thing about geometrics, and, and if you follow me much, you'll know how much I love geometric print, is that it's so easy to layer and it's, it's very pleasing to the eye. So we have this sort of oval, I believe this is wonky eyes or something like that. Um, and you'll see here uh, a few places I sort of smudged through the stencil. So I'm just applying a little bit of water and dabbing through those areas just to lessen that, um, that look and hopefully you won't notice it now. So another quick dry with the heat tool. And I'm going to add a little different um, texture and a little bit of interest when I put the stencil back down and give a couple of spritzes of the Dilutions ink spray. Um, this is a quick and easy way just to add another little bit of something special to your page. So I spritz this down and in a couple of places I thought, you know, I got a little too much. So I'll just dab that back up. It's very easy um, to fix any mistakes. It is water reactive, so keep that in mind as you're working. If you put a lot of water back down um, through other techniques, you'll pull a lot of that ink back up. So here is another part of that Stencil Club set and I want to work with just a portion of it in a sort of L-shaped border. So I'm using a painter's tape to section off the areas that I do not want to accidentally get paint through the stencil. And it's perfectly acceptable to use painter's tape in this journal. Just keep in mind that when you go to pull it back up, you'll want to pull slowly and carefully as the painter's tape can pull up a little bit of the paper with it 
on occasion, especially on this paper. It's very textured. Um, I didn't have any trouble, and you shouldn't either, as long as you're uh, being a little careful. And you'll see I made a little bit of a mess here. I've got a little bit of paint through the edges of the stencil by applying too much paint, and that's a rookie mistake. And we all do it from time to time. So I just dabbed it around with a baby wipe. I'm building so much pattern and so many layers that those little things really will just sort of blend into the background. So it's really not anything to stress about. The 9x12 stencil, as I mentioned before, um, is designed to be cut into pieces. And this is one of the sections that was cut from the 9x12. And cutting... The, I don't like to cut my stencils, and when I first, ha you know, had the idea that, you know, that's what we needed to do with this, it sort of bothered me, um, but I went ahead and did it, and I'm glad I did. It really makes the individual designs a lot easier to work with when you don't have to work around the designs you're not trying to use, if that makes sense. So I'm just uh, applying more white and sort of changing up the angle. That's another fun thing with geometrics. It's very easy to uh, move the design around in a way that's pleasing. And you'll see I'm not trying to go full on center. Um, everything doesn't have to be centered in your design and it's much more pleasing to the eye. So here's another section of the stencil. I believe this is the maybe the four by four that came in the set. Um, and I'm using a fluorescent orange acrylic paint and I'm moving the stencil around to try to get areas that would be interesting and pleasing to the eye. Information about the paint colors and manufacturers and all of the supplies that are used in this video are linked in the description. So if you have any questions or interested in that, check that out. So now you see I'm trying to figure out which way the stencil goes and I thought a little bit more of the spray would be good on that white just to break up that the brightness it was a little too bright in areas and that's the fun thing about the spray you can continue to layer just like you do with your paint now off camera I'm dipping a palette knife into white acrylic paint and I, you'll see I've barely have any on there. It's it's just the tiniest amount. And I'm using that to scrape across the surface. This paper is great for this technique because it is such a textured paper that it gives you uh, highs and lows in the paper, places for the paint to settle and give you a really textured look. That So I'm just using a little bit here and there. I'm not trying to cover up a bunch of the work that I've done, but just break up some of the shapes, add a little texture, a little interest. And this particular stencil that I'm getting ready to use is also part of the set, and it's a text stencil. And I didn't want to center it and I wasn't trying to get the entire thing on. I just wanted to, to use a little bit of that text as something interesting in the background. And I have a really hard time not using black on an art journal page. So I'm using a black acrylic and again a cosmetic sponge and just getting some of that on there and moving water around to uh, get a little bit of a bleeding effect off of the text and you can see there how that looks. So we've really built a lot of texture on this page which I really like a lot. And so I'm going to do the same thing in the opposite corner. And the, the trick here is just not to overload too much paint like I just did you can see there I have a couple of smudged areas, but that's the nice thing with adding water and moving things around is it just sort of goes, if you will, with the 
the messy textured background. So now I'm working with a black food ball pen and just going in and doing some mark making. And you can do as much or as little of this as you like. You could even go in with some other colors. And now I am dipping my paintbrush into a lot of water and into a little bit of white paint and doing some splatters. Now off camera, I cut this uh, piece of tissue from the Dina Wakely collage tissue. This piece came from the large, uh, the largest sheets that she has. I don't typically use the large ones that have the faces and I hated to waste them. And then it occurred to me I could cut the eyes from them and use that in my small journal. So that's exactly what I've done. Off camera, I've cut that out. And so that it stands out and really pops off the background, I have put a thin layer of white gesso down in the area that I intend to glue that tissue. So if you have those tissue pieces and you're not sure what to do with all of them, consider using bits and pieces of them in your journals. Uh, I don't know why it didn't occur to me sooner that I, that I could do that, uh, but it, I think I love how it turns out. So we're using Liquitex Basics Matte Medium and putting a good layer down and then another layer on top of the collage sheet. Being sure to get all of the edges uh, down really well so that after it's dry, it's adhered well and the edges won't start to peel up. So once this is dry, I'm just going to take a couple of stickers from a Tim Holtz um, set. It is, uh, I think it's called Big Talk or something like that. And I picked out a few words that I thought were appropriate. And the nice thing is they're stickers and they just pop right in and it's easy. And you don't have to do anything else. So that is my page. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel and checking out my work. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more, then maybe consider subscribing. Thanks for stopping by. I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.